guess the other option could be to stay with us if you would like. Well. Um, do you know the problem with promises? The, 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 prob the problem with promises is that you have to trust them. And as we remember fathers today, I can vividly recall every promise that my father broke uh, to me. Um, it was always we would do this later. Um, there was even one time um, I asked him if we could have a swimming pool. Uh, my father said, yeah, we can have a swimming pool. I promise I'll get you a swimming pool one day. Um, it went on for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Um, so I took it upon myself uh, to get out the yellow pages when there were yellow pages. Uh, I, uh, attempted, I uh, took it upon myself to call up a couple of pool companies uh, and send a couple of gentlemen over uh, not to dig up the ground but to give us a couple of estimates. Um, I was not... I thought it would help ease the burden on my father, but he was not too pleased uh, with my assertiveness. Uh, and to this day, we do not have a pool in my parents' backyard. That's the problem. But look, I'm not trying to tarnish his memory uh, or make me out of some type of victim. Uh, I knew every single day, every single day I knew I was loved. Um, every single day my father provided more than sufficiently for my needs and the needs of my brothers and sisters. Um, and he shared with anyone uh, who would listen, whether they were a captive victim or not, he would share with anyone that were li listening, and some people didn't want to hear, about how proud he was of me and my accomplishments. And then when I became a father, it, the, the script, when it gets switched, I realized how difficult it is to keep every promise you made to your children. I'm sure if you asked that and will this morning, they could tell you quite a few times I had had to break my promise to them. And see, your intentions are good. And most of the time, this weird thing that's called life kind of gets in the way. And so we return to the question. Do you know the problem with promises? The problem with promises is you have to trust them. You have to believe that they will be fulfilled. And you have to live as you believe that they will be fulfilled before they can do you any good. You, and, and we don't like that. We don't do that. If we're honest, we're cautious people. We want something to be thoroughly proven before we believe that it is true. We want to investigate it thoroughly before we invest in it. And we want, if we're honest, we want a 100% money back guarantee. But it just doesn't really work that way when we, in our belief in God. There's a limit to what we can know about God without making a commitment. And much of what we need to know about God can only be experienced from the inside of a relationship with God. We have to take the risk of believing and trusting and venturing out in, in a relationship with God before we can know for sure that the one whom we are trusting is real. And this kind of venturing out a little bit and trusting is what the Bible calls faith. It's faith. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but in your mind, raise your hands. Have you ever been asked to serve or in an office or a position in the church? And in, when someone asks you to serve in the church or, or, or teach or, or to do something in the church, has the person ask, asking you ever said, you know, it's really not that much work. Have they ever said that? And then you discover, after you've said yes, that a lot is expected of you. A lot is demanded of you. And the job that you volunteered for is a lot bigger and greater than they described when they were asking you to do it. We've all had that. So today, we have just that. 
with Jesus and his disciples. And it's important to note that all the people who fought, uh, uh, out of all the people, excuse me, who followed Jesus, not all of them were disciples. Um, there were the inner twelve uh, that most scholars refer to them as the apostles, the twelve that Jesus called, inner circle. Then there was another group of devoted followers. Some called them disciples. And they traveled some to see and hear Jesus, but they weren't fully devoted uh, 24 hours, 7 days a week to, to following Jesus. You see, they still kept their jobs, they kept their families, they kept their houses. Uh, they just did not give up everything uh, to follow Jesus. They just gave up some things to follow Jesus. And Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and, and the villages, and he taught in the meeting places and, and uh, the synagogues, and he healed uh, the diseased uh, bodies of the people. He healed their bruised and hurt lives as he moved from town to town. And we looked over the crowds that, that were beginning to form and following from town to town, and he saw his heart begin to break. So confused and, and how aimlessly they were. And, and, and he referred to them that, that you know, they're just kind of like wandering around like sheep without a shepherd. And he, and he, says, and he said, you know what, when I look out and see all the needs of the people... He said, it's, 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 it's a huge harvest out there. And he said this to his disciples. Look, there's, there's a huge harvest of people that are, that are yearning, that are, that are wanting to hear God's mercy and love and grace and forgiveness. And this was a, literally a turning point in Jesus' ministry. Because Jesus realized, he knew, even the Son of God could not do it alone. Even the Son of God could not do it alone. Jesus' heart went out for the people. And he knew it in order to touch more people, to heal more people, to give more lost people hope, to love more people, to fulfill more people, that he had to come up with a better plan. A vision, if you will. And here we have the plan of Jesus. If you will turn to me to the first gospel, the gospel of Matthew, beginning with the 10th verse. I mean, 10th chapter, excuse me, beginning with the first verse. Here we have Jesus' plan. Jesus' vision. He called the 12 disciples to him. He gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 of the apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, his son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of um, Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, a Simon the Zealot, and Judas uh, who betrayed him. These twelve uh, Jesus sent out with the following. Jesus said, Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of Israel, and as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out the demons, Freely you have received, freely you will give. He continues, do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or staff for the work is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay in their house until you leave. <coughs> As you enter the home, give it your greeting or blessing. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Jesus was aware of all that had to be done. And so he gives his disciples the power uh, that God had given him to heal people, to cast out demons. And then he sent them out with some very strict, or some very strict instructions to follow. He says, don't go to the Gentiles, go to the people of Israel. Jesus says, cast out demons. Heal the sick and those that are afflicted. Jesus says, look, don't take any money for your work. Because you've got for your work of healing. 
casting out demons because you got these gifts of healing and casting out free from God. So you're not going to personally profit off of what God has given you. He says, depend on the people to provide for you your food and your clothing and whatever you might need. Jesus knew that no one was above, above someone else. Jesus knew the generosity of the people and of the, of the Jesus movement. Jesus knew that in the temple model that, that the teachers and the rabbis and the Pharisees and the Sadducees wore very fine clothing, very fine robes. And he said, in each village, when you find someone who is worthy, stay with them until it's time for you to leave. Jesus said, you will rely on the generosity of other people. They will open up a place for you to rest and to stay. They will take you in. They will feed you. And he said, when you go to a house that is worthy of your blessing, give it to them. However, if you don't receive, if they don't receive your blessing, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house and town and just move on. And he goes on to say, if you continue reading, he said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. He says, watch out, people, because they will hand you over to the councils and they'll beat you into your synagogues if, if, if you're caught. They will hand you over to the, the regional authorities and demand that, they, that you give your testimony to the Gentiles. Don't worry. Even in the midst of your trials, God is with you. He says, don't worry about what you will say because the Holy Spirit will do the talking through you. And everyone will hate you on account of my name, Jesus says, but whoever stands firm until the end will be saved. And whenever they harass you in one city, just escape it and go on to the next. And although this, 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 and all through this long list of things, the idea is this. Jesus is saying it's not going to be easy to be my disciple. Jesus says, look, it's not going to be easy to be a disciple. Being part of a faith community will, will place some demands on the participants. And Jesus knew this. We are called by Christ to go forth, to go forward, to help others, to seek ministries of justice, to be people who truly care and love one another. And this is no less in the church and in the faith community. When you are asked to do something, it's because someone somewhere has seen in you the abilities to perform that task and a deep faith which is needed to perform that task. And Christ is calling each one of us. So the question is, are you ready to dare the road? <laughs> Remember, God is always with us. You will not be alone and you will be empowered by something called the Holy Spirit. Do you know the problem with promises? The problem with promises is that you have to trust them. You have to believe that they will be fulfilled. But more importantly, you have to live as if you believe that they will be fulfilled. Before any promises of God are any good to you. Gracious and wonderful God, we have heard through your holy scripture of what you have empowered us and called us to be and have called us to do. You have promised, dear God, if we follow you, you will provide our every need. If we follow you, you will strengthen us and give us what we need to fulfill out our life 
as living followers of Jesus Christ. You have promised to sustain us. You have promised to give us power above our own. So help us, dear God. And the fear that we carry within us, remind us of your promise. Remind us that the problem with promises is we must trust them. That we put our trust in you. Not in a person. Not in a committee. Not in a group of people that are part of our faith community. Not even in a vision that you've given us. That we put our trust in you. We know, dear God, that that's very hard to do when we live our life full of fear and uncertainty. But we're reminded over and over again as we search for truth, as we search for proof, you did not let those 12 disciples down. You have never let anyone that has truly been called to serve you down. You've always provided their every need. Help us to remember all the promises that you've already kept in our life and in our faith community. So in Christ's name we pray. Amen.